Hi everybody, and welcome to a Zendikar Rising Draft League video. I'm recording this immediately post the Tron video that went up earlier today, and let me tell you, I actually experienced a spike of legitimate rage at the end of that league, and uh, that's not something. That is not something that normally happens to me when I play Magic. Uh, so I normally, uh, alongside Tron, I upload jank constructed content, but I have to, I have to do that again tomorrow uh, anyway. And I don't really have that many jank decks in queue, and I'm still looking for some Zendikar Rising cards. And I do not have the mental capacity to go through a whole nother constructed league right now, so we're going to do a limited video today. Uh, as our Kano bonus content of the day, because I try to upload a second video when I upload Tron to keep everybody happy, because not everybody likes watching Tron, even though the majority of you do. <sighs> We're going to have a nice, relaxing, limited league, I hope. Alrighty. I apparently have lost... How do I... Oh yeah, change card size to be bigger. Okay, so we've got the Mill Rogue, and we also have... One of the duels. I think I take the duel here. Please stop. Moto, 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 stop. How do I get you to stop? Okay. I'd like to take the rogue. I think I'll force mill in one of these drafts. But I think in this one, we're definitely taking the branch loft pathway. Uh, I don't mind picking these lands up. I think they're great. Uh, the pathway lands are very similar to how the fetch lands were intended to function in limited circumstances. Um, when you. When you play a fetch land without fetchable duels, you have to pick between two colors of mana to like until the end of the draft. Okay. <laughs> I like Forsaken Monument a lot, but I don't think it can be played in limited. What is it worth? Only a couple of tickets. I don't think I'm going to take it. Um, I am kind of interested in taking the Merfolk Wind Robber. I think the one mana rogue is fine. Paired Tactician is also not bad and would let us stay in green-white, which I think is Landfall? I don't actually remember. I see a lot of black and white in this pack, so I'm going to take Paired Tactician. A Foil Branch Loft Pathway. I will take that. Uh, Canyon Yerboa is amazing, and Tangled Floral Hedron's awesome. Rabid Bite is one of, if not the best, green common in the set. I'm going to take the Branch Loft Pathway, and we're going to try and force a green-white. There's a Crawling Barons. Is that worth anything? It is not currently worth anything. I about had a panic attack because I thought I had stu like not recorded. And I was like... <gasps> <laughs> so, oh man, I'm a little bit touchy right now. Uh, let's take Crawling Barons. I've got a feeling that Crawling Barons could actually be quite good. We have quite excellent fixing in the form of two Branch Loft Pathways. So if we stick to green and white and do like the green-white landfall deck... Um, we'll probably get rewarded quite hard. So Nahiri's Binding is great. Territorial Scythe Cat is also fantastic. Canyon Yerboa. Jer Jerboa. I don't know how to pronounce that. Oh, Bruce Tarl. He's a, he's a legendary card. And he does the flavor text. Um, I think we take the Jerboa simply because while the Scythe Cat is better by itself... Jerboa is better if we're going wide, and I have a feeling that green-white is going to go wide. It's it's generally a color combination that does. Um, and usually, like, if you're if you're playing green and white, you can pick up a bunch of dorky, like, random two-drops, you know. Okay, camera, please focus on me. All right, marry a captain is not bad. We have a scale the heights as well. Really? It wanted to auto-select scale the heights over a marry a captain? Ameria Captain is very good, though. We could also take a Kazandu Nectar Pot. <laughs> it has Landfall on it. Uh, we're going to take the Captain. The Captain is quite nice. Um, we have our options of Farsight Adept, Yuraga Visionary, or Skyclave Sentinel. I actually really like Yuraga Sen uh, Visionary. Uh, just 4 mana, 3 2, draw a card. It's quite nice. 3 mana, 3 3 might be stronger, but it draws my opponent a card as well. And I'd like to avoid that if at all possible. Relic Amulet, I feel like, is a definition of a trap card. Like, not a card with the subtype trap, but actually, like, not very good and limited. And I know there's going to be somebody in the in the comments below being like, but I drafted a deck with Relic Amulet and it was sweet. I'm not saying you can't. I'm just saying I feel like, on average, you won't. Um, 
Also, not to mock anybody who was about to post that in response to me uh, saying it. I'm just, I'm still a little bit touchy after the end of that Tron video. So, if I seem a little more, if I seem like I have a little more animosity, um, it's because I haven't, like, come all the way down from that. <laughs> uh, Relic Axe, I think, is uh, pretty decent. Having it automatically attached to creatures is nice. A lot of the white creatures are warriors, and the red-white archetype is, um, like, warriors and equipment. So we could go, like, three color, potentially. Um... Or we could even be just like red, white, and splash green off of branch loft pathways, which would be quite nice. Practice tactics might be better, though. Yeah, I'm going to take practice tactics, because we have a lot... Uh, we're, the plan is to get a lot of creatures and play them all. <laughs> Adventure awaits, I think, is not bad. Um, impulsing for a creature card is, like, okay. But the ability to draw a card, even if you if you didn't get a creature card, just drawing a card and cantripping is very nice. Um, I kind of like Mesa Links because I do want to curve because we have the like Anthem Jerboa guy. And I think one of the reason, one of the problems with the decks I've been drafting in this format recently has been, I've been focusing too much on the like three and four slot and we need creatures earlier than that. Cell Sword is a fine pickup. Farsight Adept I will take over a pressure point. Um, having my opponent draw a card is bad, but us both drawing a card is not as bad and I will take it over nothing as far as, like, it fits in our deck and nothing else in the pack did. I mean, I guess you I, you could make an argument that I could play Pressure Point, but Pressure Point um, is like a last resort combat trick kind of a thing. All right, Orion Reef Ooze. Wow, we're getting all of the all of the rares today. We've got three rares already, and it is, it is just starting to be pack two. So Orion Reef Ooze, uh, when it enters the battlefield, put a 1-1 counter on a target creature you control. Whenever it attacks, put a 1-1 counter on each attacking creature with a 1-1 counter on it. I think that's fantastic. If we can get a couple more cards that just start with 1-1 counters or add 1-1 counters, uh, the ooze will be quite good. Snarecaster being a 1-4 with reach is nice. Angel Heart Protector is also good. I'm kind of scared at the lack of green and white cards in this pack. Um, this, I actually think, is quite good and limited. Uh, giving a creature plus one plus one for each member of your party seems pretty good, especially when like party members are not that hard to come by. So I'll take that. Oof. I want to take Rabid Bite because I feel like we are going to need some removal and Rabid Bite is among the best. I also want to take the Canyon Jerboa because having multiple of these just seems hilarious. Like multiple anthems every time you play a land for the turn is just seems good. But Rabid Bite is, I think, too good to pass in this situation. Okay, Paired Tactician, um, I actually like, because we already have a Paired Tactician, and having it uh, give the other one 1-1 counters is nice, especially when we have the Ooze. Scythe Cat is also nice, and Vastwood Surge honestly is not bad either. Um, in the like Magic Christmas Land scenario where we have multiple Yerboas out and get a bunch of Landfall triggers, it's kind of nice. Um, but I think Paired Tactician's probably the best card for us here. I've got a feeling we'll get a lot of uh, a lot of warriors. Okay, this kind of sucks. I I do like Dauntless Survivor, but Fearless Fledgling is just better. Dauntless Survivor being a warrior is nice because of our paired tacticians. It might make it around. Odds are it won't. McKindy Ox is a good curve topper. Being able to tap down important creatures is nice. Um, but we're kind of playing the Landfall deck, and Fearless Fledgling is a car is a really good card with Landfall. Okay, uh, Cell Sword's fantastic. Seagate Banneret's good. But Vastwood Fortification here, the instant put a 1-1 counter on something seems nice, and it being a land as well just seems, like, really good. So we have 10 creatures, uh, we have some number of warriors, we have a couple wizards, uh, we have a few creatures that don't have uh, creature types at all that contribute to party, otherwise I might take uh, Seagate Colossus. I think I'm going to take Scale the Heights, because it adds counters, we draw a card, we gain life. It does kind of everything. Dauntless Survivor seems nice, um, for reasons previously enumerated, but so is Gnarled Colony. <sighs> Gnarled Colony, I think, is actually what I'm going to take here. Um, the card's good on two, and it's great on five. Okay, we can take a Snare Caster. It's not bad, even if we don't end up main decking it necessarily. It is a rogue for party, which I don't think we have any rogues yet. And that might be the only green rogue. Green or white rogue, I'm not sure. Um, but it might just be a strictly sideboard card for us. 
Okay, Angel Heart Protector is good. Helps us attack into blockers. Um, I will take a disenchant for the sideboard. I just realized that uh, Crawling Barons is also good with the ooze. Might of Mirasa is a fair combat trick. So I think I'll take that. We don't really want a 3 mana 1 4 that much. We'll take McKindy Ox and Seagate Banneret is fine. And we are forced a swamp. Let's see what we get in pack 3. Pack 3, we get Drana the Last Blood Chief. Whenever it attacks. Defending player chooses a non-legendary creature card in your graveyard. Return that card to the battlefield with a 1-1 counter on it. We have good green-white mana, but no fixing for black, let alone double black. She's only worth a ticket, unless she's foil, in which case she's worth 11. I think taking her and trying to split amongst three colors is wrong. I think we take the Fearless Fledgling. Kazandu Stomper, Scale the Heights, if either of those came around, that'd be great. I would even take a Skyclave Sentinel. There's a lot for us in this pack, and someone's going to be very happy to take a Drana. But it's not us. Okay. Um, Nahiri's Binding is good removal. Reclaim the Wastes uh, we can use for fixing or just to get more lands out of our deck. I kind of like taking a Strength of Solidarity here. I like being able to put a bunch of 1-1 counters on stuff. Unfortunately, we have not seen that many green or white modal dual-faced cards that are spells and lands. I mean, we have the two of the dual, but how many creatures? We have 16 creatures. I'm going to take the Binding. I think we need more removal to an extent. Man, Blood Chief's Thirst. Blood Chief's Thirst is good. I kind of like Expedition Healer. It's something that I would play over Mesa Lynx most of the time, just because it contributes to party and it's roughly the same size. Oh, man. This card is really good and fits into the 1 1 counter theme super hard. But if we take it, we're like guaranteed to not get um, fixing for it, is the problem. I'll take it. I don't know if I'm playing it though. Okay, this is another tough one. Uh, Dauntless Survivor is good, once again, because it curves into Paired Tactician. Rabid Bite is absurd. I think we have enough creatures. I'm really sad we're passing all the mice, because the mouse is actually really good. Uh, let's see if I regret that. Okay, we'll take another Angel Heart Protector over a Taijuru uh, Snare Caster, just because it's a card that lets us be more aggressive. I don't know if this is my original pack or not, but I'm going to take Scale the Heights. Um, I guess we take Adventure Awaits. Base Camp does not fix for Grackma. So we'll take Adventure Awaits, I guess. Okay. Um, I'm going to take Kazandu Stomper just to have like a high-end thing. It helps us buy back lands for... Um, Landfall triggers, though we only have the one that's a spell, so it's a little bit worse. But it is a 6-mana six 6-5 six with Trample and can help us close the game. I'm not going to take a third scale to Heights, I don't think. Maybe I should, but I want to have at least one big creature in the deck. Um, I'll take another Strength of Solidarity as a permanent buff. Having a Zendikon may not be bad. Just animating a land into a creature with haste, and then getting a land back if it dies. I think I'm actually going to try that over a third Protector, because we have so many cards in the 3-drop slot anyway. Uh, Expedition Healer is not bad. I guess Seagate Banneret, Snare Caster, and get forced a forest. Or a, a, an island, not a forest. My goodness. Okay. Let's see what we're dealing with here. Um, I'm going to play this Vast Wood Fortification as though it were a land. Okay. Unfortunately, I do not think I can play black at all. There was some chance, had I taken Drana, um, we could have taken the Blood Chief's Thirst, and we could have taken the... Uh, we could have taken Drana, Blood Chief's Thirst, and Grackmaw, and then maybe taken another black card and gone three color. But I think this is going to be better overall. I'm not going to play Mesa Lynx. Uh, Seagate Banneret is a warrior for Paired Tactician. I think I only want one, though. 
This card is fine. We're playing an aggressive deck. Having a card early is nice. Helps us go wide. Helps fill in our curve a little bit. Uh, gives us a mana dump late game. So um, I'm not going to run Utility Knife. I don't think it's good enough. I need to cut about eight cards. Let's take a look at our worst cards, shall we? Uh, Ooze is amazing. Snare casters can go on the sideboard. Healer's not bad. Getting a big life linker by adding a bunch of counters to it is kind of nice. Um, I'm going to cut Adventure Awaits. I might cut both. We have two Rabid Bites, and we have a lot of stuff that does counters. Yeah, I'm going to actually cut the other Adventure Awaits. I don't think we're looking for... Like, it, it could help us get to Orion Reef Ooze. It does curve into it, but if we're doing that, we're... We, the only way that Orion Reef Ooze is good on turn 3 is if we played Seagate Banner on turn 1, and we only have 1. Um, Might of Marasa is absolutely fair. 2 mana Giant Growth, or 5 mana plus 5 plus 5. It's kind of like a Lava Axe, a little bit. Um, it could be good, but I think we have better cards already. Like, I want to be curving, like, Healer into Angel Heart Protector, or I want to be curving Cell Sword into Paired Tactician. Like, I want to be doing that, and Might of Marasa is only good kind of later than that. And we're really looking for cards to cut at this point. Okay, um, we need to cut still about three cards. Mana is not really a concern because we have two of the dual lands that are rare. They ca our mana is going to come in untapped except for one modal dual-faced card, uh, which I think is quite good. Practice Tactics is good, but it's better defensively than it is offensively, which kind of strikes me as a card we should cut because we're kind of playing like green-white uh, aggro slash maybe a little bit into the mid-range area. Um... I like keeping Zendikon as a way to sneak in some damage late. Like if we have five, if this this effectively is a five mana four four with haste, or a four mana four four that enters the battlefield tapped. So it's a four mana four four that enters the battlefield tapped, or has kicker one and enters the battlefield with haste. That's how I think about that. Um, it's possible we cut the Stomper just because we have so many early creatures and early ways to make our creatures powerful. If we consistently find ourselves in a place where we can't swing past our opponent's creatures, I'll bring it in. And then I need to cut one card. Our worst card in this deck might be a Farsight Adept. It's one of our only two wizards, but like if we have the wizard out, it's, you know, it's kind of whatever, it's not uh, necessary. We only kind of tangentially have party mechanics. And I don't want to be drawing my opponent cards, though a 3-mana three 3-3 three, that draws me a card is nice. Having it draw my opponent a card is pretty bad. So I think I'm going to cut that, simply because we don't have a lot of card advantage. Uh, Scale the Heights, like, maybe counts as card advantage a little bit, and Yuraga Visionary. But, like, um, we're a deck that's going to struggle if our opponent is drawing more cards than us. Okay. Uh, I think this is fair, so let's add in the duels the crawling barons and we'll count that as a land see what moto wants to add here six and six all right i mean we're pretty evenly split we only have one double white card so our mana is going to be like perfect all right let's see if we can beat our opponents down shall we with green white landfall i guess it's still technically landfall i feel bad about passing two of the mice but we have two fearless fledglings and those are amazing to curve into our three mana ooze so this is a deck that's going to work, um, if this deck works, it will work on Synergy, and if this deck fails, it will be because we got out card advantaged or um, played against mono removal. <laughs> Alright, we lost the die roll, which is putting us at a significant disadvantage because we want to play first and we want to be aggressive. Um, I think this is a great opener. We have Seagate Banneret into Paired Tactician. We can Rabbit Bite if my opponent plays an X1. On turn one or two. I might Strength of Solidarity Seagate Banneret right away, uh, just for something to do on turn two. Our opponent starts Forest, and they tap it. Okay. We'll start Seagate Banneret, pass the turn. If my opponent plays like the Floral Hedron, I'll just Rabid Bite it here. Okay. 
Cell Sword is also a rabid bite target. Attack for one. My opponent did mulligan to six, which I think is worth um, calling out. They are playing three colors, though. Balaged Recovery. Okay. That was kind of a weak turn. So what we're going to do here is we're going to play Paired Tactician. Get in for one. If my opponent spends their turn replaying Cell Sword, um, we can Angel Heart Protector Paired Tactician and attack with both of these, put a 1 1 counter on Paired Tactician. And we can Strength of Solidarity on this to make it big enough that they have to double block to kill it. I kind of like how this is shaping up right now. Okay, play another forest. Let's go Angel Heart Protector. We'll give Paired Tactician indestructible until end of turn. And Strength of Solidarity, put two 1 1 counters there. Attack for six, put a 1 1 counter on Paired Tactician, so it's actually seven. Opponent does not block. The only block they effectively had that turn was double block Seagate Banneret. Next turn we can swing, this will get another counter, and we can pump the whole team off of Banneret's ability, which will feel really good. Ardent Electromancer. Opponent's going to add two red mana to their mana pool. Oh, they're actually going to use it on something too. Another Cell Sword. Okay. I don't think that changes what we do necessarily. Um, okay, opponent is attacking. Well, we're not going to block. That makes our attack even better. Another Strength of Solidarity. We could put two 1-1 one, one counters on Angel Heart Protector. Um, and then if they want to kill any of our creatures, they have to double block it. I kind of like that. We're going to save this last land in hand. Opponent just uh, gives up. Apparently. Alright. So our opponent is also playing an aggressive deck. Um, in that case, I think uh, we saw two Cell Swords, so I think Practice Tactics um, increases in value. And I think it's actually going... Well, alright then. Apparently our opponent was like, nah, I can't win. And just gave up. So we've got the first round 1-0. Alright, moving on to round 2. Alright. Um, if we had another land, this hand would actually be like insanely good. Um, as it stands right now, this is really risky, especially with only 16 total land in the deck, including the tap land. Um, so I'm going to mulligan. Okay, this I can make work, especially if we draw green mana, um, or really any mana at all. Fearless Fledgling, I've got a feeling, is going to be very good. Our opponent also mulligan to 6. Uh, looks like they're just staying at 6, though. They're not going to mulligan to 5. Um, I'm going to keep this, and I'm going to put back Nissa's Zendikon. Oops, I can hit it again. Okay, opponent starts Forest. We draw Forest. Nice. Play Plains, pass the turn. So one thing to note is, despite the fact that it has it in the art... Fearless Fledgling only has flying whenever you make landfall. So play a forest, play Fledgling, pass the turn. Opponent plays a mountain. Reclaims the waste. Gets a swamp. And Thundering Rebuke to kill our creature. So play a plains... Run out Angel Heart Protector. Okay, pass the turn. But it likely plays the swamp they just got. And a Myriad Construct. Okay, we get another Fearless Fledgling. Um, hmm. So it doesn't get this ability if it dies, only if it's been targeted. Okay, I'm going to play a Banneret and a Fledgling this turn. I could 
I have the option of strength of solidarity here and offering the trade. Um, and if my opponent trades, they don't get the tokens. It's only if it gets targeted. I actually think I'm going to do that over playing the fledgling, because playing the fledgling next turn and then uh, using rabid bite could be good. This forces my opponent to think about blocking. Um, we are at equal number of cards in hand currently. My opponent might have actually misread Myriad Construct because I know I did the first 12 times. And they might just be fine with trading too. That's also a possibility. Okay. They trade. So kind of two for one to ourself, but we prevented our opponent from getting a whole bunch of 1-1s. One they play a Canopy Bailoth. We untap. We draw a Forest. So play Fearless Fledgling. Play a forest, give it a 1-1 counter, pass the turn. No attacks. Um, if we draw a land next turn, Fearless Fledgling takes down that Bayloth, which is fantastic. Nope, opponent had the Rabid Bite first. Gets in for four, no blocks. We untap, we draw a Paired Tactician. Let's get a Visionary. Next turn, if we have a land, we can Paired Tactician into... Uh, rabid bite. Okay, doesn't really matter which side we play this on. Um, I'm gonna play it on white. Go to combat, get in for one. Um, if my opponent attacks, I think I block and trade. Unless, of course, they play a land, in which case we just take our beats. Opponent has another rabid bite, sure. And they play a skyclave pickaxe. Okay, we get a land. I'm going to hold that one in hand because we do have landfall triggers. Uh, actually, not that many. Our, both of our fearless fledglings are dead. We'll go ahead and kill this. Awesome. Uh, play a forest. We'll get in for one. Uh, we can start putting 1-1 one, one counters on this paired tactician next turn and pumping the team, of course. If we just draw lands, if we draw anything else, we can cast it. Our opponent has a Kazandu Stomper. That's problem. Alright, play a forest, pass the turn. Opponent is holding two lands. I think we gotta draw our arrest. Okay, opponent suits up. This is game one, yeah? Yeah, okay. Uh, we take eight because it has trample. Draw Orion Reef Ooze. Which costs one too many mana to hold up Seagate Banneret in activation. So if we play this, put a 1-1 one -one counter here that gives us 5 toughness. If I block with both of them, we take 3, but then we're just dead. It technically gives me the out of drawing an arrest, but I don't want to show my opponent that I have this, and the odds that we win are very low. Okay, um, I don't think we make any adjustments here, we'll just run it back. Unfortunately, my opponent landed a creature and started rabid biting everything that we had before we got the opportunity to really rabid bite anything they had. And then they top decked into another threat, so a little bit of bad luck on that part. Alright, this time we get to play first. Ooh, if we had a white mana, I would keep, but we don't, so I got a mulligan. Alright, I have to mulligan again, because I can't keep that. And this, I think I can work with. we got to put back two cards, so we put back the most expensive. And I think we put back the Expedition Healer. Okay. Start Plains Banneret. Pass the turn. Really hoping we draw a third land, and we can just go Banneret, Gnarled, Colony, Ooze. Okay, opponent starts by reclaiming the waste, getting a mountain. Draw planes. Play Gnarled Colony. And attack for one. Opponent plays the mountain they got. We untap, we draw planes. Play the ooze. 1-1 one, one counter on the Gnarled. Go to combat. And attack for four. 
Okay, I'm going to play as a Swamp into a Murasa Brute. We draw a Branch Loft Pathway. Play a Plains. Um, we could attack here, but we lose the ooze if we do. So we're going to wait one turn so we can activate Seagate Banneret. This does give my opponent an additional turn to try and draw removal. See if they found it. I think waiting is ultimately the best idea here. Um, if we trade off Gnarled Colony, we lose what's going to make us snowball. And if my opponent had like a bigger creature they could play this turn, um, losing our Gnarled Colony and losing our snowball would absolutely really hurt. Okay, opponent plays a Canopy Bayloth. We draw planes. So play a Branch Loft Pathway on green, and we will go to combat. Attack here and here. Put a 1 1 counter on. See how our opponent blocks. They could trade for both of these. Oh no, they can't trade for uh, Gnarled Colony unless they double block. Okay, they double block there. So we are going to kill the Bayloth, as that is a far higher value creature. Pump the whole team, opponent takes five, loses their Bayloth, we lose our ooze. Okay. Opponent untaps. Alright, they play the Landfall Pickaxe, and they attack for five. They're currently racing from a losing position, though. They gotta have something else here. They do. And it is a deadly alliance on our big creature. That's a problem. I hate doing this, but at the same time... Like, because I know the instant I cast this arrest, my opponent's gonna be like, Kazondu Stomper, ha ha ha! But like, I don't really have a choice here. We're so low on cards. I'm keeping this land in hand for when we draw a Fearless Fledgling. Okay, hit our opponent for one, they go to nine. Okay, opponent draws a card, they're up to four. They play another Mirasa Brute. A land, and they move over the pickaxe. Okay. We untap, draw a paired tactician, play the tactician, pass the turn. That does at least let us make a creature large enough to attack. Phylath World Sculptor. That explains the third color of mana. Oh my god. And they played a land, too. Uh, yeah, I don't think we can beat that. Uh, okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, there's, there's no way for us to win. So our opponent takes the match, and I'll see you guys in round three. All right, round three, here we go. I would love to play first. Um, we got a one, a two, and a three, and potentially a four, so I do like this. So start planes, play banneret, pass the turn. Opponent plays a Valakut Stone Forge, tapped. We draw another planes, so play a planes, play expedition healer. We go to combat and hit for one. Take our opponent to 19, pass the turn. And they play a mountain into a Grotag Bug Catcher. We draw another planes, so play a forest, play a paired tactician. We go to combat, we'll attack for three. Opponent can just block the banneret and... Uh, prevent the one damage, but they still take two. Okay. Opponent apparently is stuck on two mana with a Teeter Peak Ambusher. Uh, they attack us for two. We do not block. We untap and draw an Ameria Captain. Play a Plains. I think we definitely play the Captain here. <laughs> okay. Opponent cannot beat the one, two, three, four. I mean, that was a pretty sick curve, too. So, run it back for game two. This hand is not capable. It would be capable if we drew like three planes in a row, but the odds of that are pretty low. <sighs> no green, no early plays. All right, I will keep at five. I'm not thrilled about it, though. Put back our green cards. Really hope we draw like forest planes off the top. Us being on the draw made this hand like sort of okay. Well, we drew the forest, play the banneret, pass the turn. I think we've started banneret almost every turn one that we've had. Which I think is pretty good. 
Okay, opponent starts Bug Catcher. Draw Forest, which is also fairly good. Play Fearless Fledgling. Pass the turn, no attacks. Okay, opponent plays a Teeter Peak Ambusher. Attacks for two, no blocks. We untap, we draw a Maria Captain. So play a land, give that plus one, plus one, and flying. Play Angel Heart Protector because it is a cleric over the Paired Tactician. Paired Tactician is better by itself, but uh, if we draw a land, I want to have two party for this uh, Emeria Captain being a 3-3 Flying Vigilance. I think that would be absolutely insane. Uh, my opponent can attack and pump if they want to, or threaten to attack and pump. Um, okay, they play a Warrior Lord and attack. This is fine. We really want to draw any land here. Awesome. Put a counter on the Fledgling. Play the Ameria Captain. Go to combat. Attack for six. Opponent can block the Angel Heart Protector if they want to. They don't. I think we win this race. Opponent plays a Plains. It kind of depends on whether or not they have removal. And whether or not we draw like a Life Linker or what we draw, I guess. I'd like to top deck a land. Okay, they play an Ardent Electromancer and get two mana back. Then they play an Angel Heart Protector, which lets them swing with the War Leader without uh, fear of reprisal. So the question is now, do we block? Well, we can block here for free. Um, I don't really want to give up the Banneret. Not yet, anyway. Okay, we untap. We draw a land. Play a land. This gains flying and gains a counter. Um, if we attack with everything, we guarantee 9 damage. They go to 3... Then they just have to block Angel Heart Protector. So let's get in with our two flyers and nothing else. And I think because of blocking concerns, we need to play out Paired Tactician this turn. Oh, shoot. Uh, I'm not used to how many stops I have set. I'm sorry. I may have thrown this game because of that. When I reinstalled Moto, I had to reset up my stops. And I think I had a stop on the end of combat, which is why I keep clicking too many times. And opponent plays a Kabira Outrider, which they can use to pump their creature with Trample up to lethal. They attack with everybody. Okay. So this has 8 power. I don't think we can survive. Yeah, but even if I had played this guy out, we could block, block, block. Yeah, we still couldn't do anything about this. So, thankfully, even though I punted, it didn't actually matter. Um, because my opponent is quite aggressive, I'm going to bring in Practice Tactics, and I think I dropped the Zendikon. Try it like this. And we're basically praying that we have a better curve than our opponent, and that we don't mulligan real low like we just did. Okay, no one drop. All three drops, which could be very bad. Um, we do have both colors of mana, but we're never really worried about that. I think I gotta keep. This is a little bit risky, because we do need to draw mana, and we're on the play. Uh, we have some decent twos we could draw, but if we draw that, we need to draw a third mana, still. Okay, McKindy Ox is neither a two-drop nor a land. Okay, opponent plays a Grotag Bug Catcher. We draw a land and can breathe a slight sigh of relief. Play Paired Tactician. Pass the turn. Uh, we played Paired Tactician simply because uh, it synergizes with Warriors, and if we draw our one drop, we can play the one drop and Rabid Bite next turn, and the one drop is a Warrior. Okay, opponent plays a Kargan War Leader. Attacks us for three. We take three, no blocks. We untap. Draw a land. Play a land. And I think this is too dangerous to leave alive. I think we just have to bite it now. Go to combat. Hit our opponent for three. I'd like to play another paired tactician here. And that way we can start putting 1-1 one -one counters on both of them. If I draw a land, I will probably end up playing the ox. Because then if I draw another land, I can play double three drop. I mean, I guess I could still play double three drop if I drew two lands in a row, right? <clears throat> okay, they pump the bug catcher. And then the bug catcher pumps itself. Thankfully, they only have one member in their party. Okay, we untap. We draw an Expedition Healer. Um, hmm. 
I like playing Expedition Healer here. Question is, do I hold back with Paired Tactician if I do? Expedition Healer makes Angel Heart Protector a really good play next turn. I think we offer the trade, though. Maybe we don't. Maybe we just play Angel Heart Protector. Like, that still lets us Angel Heart Protector Expedition Healer next turn. And if I have to throw away this Angel Heart Protector on blocking that Kabira Outrider, I think it's worth it. Okay, opponent goes to 14. We do need to draw another white source, though, in order to play double spell next turn. I guess if we draw a green source, we could play McKinney Ox and be mana efficient, but... My apologies if the air conditioner is coming through. I just noticed that my microphone is going up and down. I still have my same setup from before on noise gating and filtering and stuff like that, and I do have it muffled with like a wall of blankets, uh, big noise blankets. So my apologies if that's making the audio weird at all. All right, it shut off. Okay, opponent attacks. We'll try to trade here. Okay, we do trade. We take two, go to 12. Four mana, our opponent plays a Scorch Rider. Okay, we draw planes. So I think we Angel Heart Protector, and then um, second main phase we'll cast Expedition Healer. I'm going to put stops on my end of combat and my opponents. So go to combat, attack for three. When it does not block. Yeah, that feels right. Sorry I didn't do that right away. It's not something I really thought about. Making sure you have your stop stops set appropriately and as you expect is a big deal for playing Moto. I haven't really talked about it, but like on this bar, uh, wherever you see a white uh, triangle, if it's on the bottom side, that's on your turn. And if it's on the top side, it's on your opponent's turn. And of course you can lock or unlock to um, prevent changes, that sort of a thing. So you don't accidentally click it in the frenzy of trying to play cards when you're running out of time or something like that. Okay, opponent plays an Electromancer. Adds uh, more mana and plays an Expedition Champion. And if they attack with those two, I am just going to block them down. Okay, trade here, trade here, and we'll gain one. So now Expedition Champion shrinks. We untap and draw a Banneret. So I'm going to play Paired Tactician and Seagate Banneret this turn. This will let us have a big swing next turn, especially if my opponent holds back to block. We can play McIndiox, and if we draw a land, we can tap down whatever the better blocker is which in their current case would be Ardent Electromancer. If they play a warrior, it would be Expedition Champion, of course. Okay, my opponent attacks for three. We will not block. We can play anything in our deck we can draw. Okay, Journey to Oblivion. Opponent takes a Paired Tactician. We untap. Draw land. Perfect. So play the Big Ox. Play a land. Tap my opponent's champion, go to combat, and attack with both, so we get the paired tactician trigger. Unfortunate our opponent had removal, but we are fortunate that their removal was so expensive. Uh, we hit our opponent for five, they go to six. If we draw another land, we can play that land, tap the champion, animate crawling barons, and swing for what I hope is lethal. Okay, opponent plays a relic axe, equips to the champion. And they play a Teeter Peak Ambusher. Okay, they attack for six. So they have two blockers. If we draw a land, we could tap down the Electromancer, uh, animate Crawling Barons, and swing with everything, which would kill our opponent. Um, if we don't draw a land, there's a good chance we can get burned out from this position. I think we got to go for trying to draw a land here. Rabid Bite would also do it. There's the land. Okay, play the Branch Loft Pathway. Tap down the Electromancer. I guess we could attack and just pump. Is there something I'm missing? Nope. All right, well, we got ourselves two Zendikar Rising Packs, boys. It's the first time that uh, I've actually won anything in one of these drafts. Uh, I won a sealed. I went seven and two in a nine round sealed. But uh, yeah. All right, well, I think we learned some stuff about Zendikar Draft, and I'm sorry that a jank constructed video did not go up alongside Tron, but like I said, I just did not have the energy for that. Um, be on the lookout for tomorrow. I should be playing another jank constructed deck. I haven't decided on which one yet. Um, whether it to be another variant of Crab Mill, or uh, I want to play Belcher or Oops All Spells, quote-unquote, but I don't know if I have... 
enough of the cards yet. Um, I have to get around to actually finishing off that list and doing some tests. So I guess we'll see. Anyway, if you like this content and you want to see more of it, please leave a like, drop a comment, and subscribe to the channel if you're so inclined. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitch, same username on Twitch as you find me on here. I stream Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Mountain Time, 8 p.m. Eastern, and I hope to see you there. Thanks for, uh, thanks for watching. Talk to you guys later. Bye!